Hey, what's going on, everybody? We are out here at Forest Lawn Cemetery in Goodlitzville, Tennessee, just a little, little outside of Nashville. It's that way. And beautiful little town. I rode by and went and got some lunch, and it is a great little place. The wind's up today. Storms just blew through here, so I'm just, it's, a, it's lucky that we even get to do this today. So, yeah, we're here to visit a legend of country music, Mr. String Bing Aikman. And before we go visit his grave and pay our respects and talk about his life, let me get the ad out of the way and say if this is your first time here, welcome. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, you know, doing all those things. And if this isn't your first time here, hey, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, we've got, you know, the members section and we got the merch and we got all the stuff, right? All right, so with all that plugged, let's get to looking for his grave. There's quite a few uh, older country music uh, stars buried here, you know, important guitarists and stuff like that, but we're just going to do String Bean today. And then maybe we can come back and do like a whole collection of the cemetery. So, yeah, we got a, I'm pretty sure I know where his grave's at. We're going to walk around, talk a little bit about his life. We'll visit the grave. We'll talk about the, the, the terrible tragedy, like cliffhanger. For those of you that don't know, it was a, it was not a good ending. It was a, it was crappy, man. Just to be quite honest, it's like, how can, you know, it's just, uh, you'll, we'll hear about it here in a second. So yeah, let me get this thing turned around and we'll get to walking. We got to go towards you that way. I'm pretty sure. So yeah, let's get to going and let's get to talking. So yeah, the wind is blowing pretty, pretty serious. I don't know if a storm's coming in or what, but I'm about to lose my hat. And uh, I really don't want nobody to see that I'm losing my hair. So let's hope that doesn't happen. All right. So as we walk across, we're gonna go, we're going that way. I'm pretty sure that's where it showed it at on Find a Grave. So Mr. Aikman was born in Anvil, Kentucky. He got his first banjo when he was 12 years old in exchange for a prize pair of bantam chickens. Aikman began playing at a local dance and gained a reputation as a musician. But the income was not enough to live on. So he joined the Depression Era Civilian Conservation Corps, building roads and planting trees. Now you could correct me in the comments, but I'm pretty sure that was the thing that Roosevelt did, right? To jumpstart the country out of the depression. So eventually he entered a talent contest, judged by Asa Martin. He won and was invited to join Martin's band. And during an early appearance, Martin forgot his name. So he introduced him as String Bean because of his tall, thin build. Aikman used that nickname for the rest of his career. We were right by the airport, too, so if you hear that, that's what that is. All right. Aikman originally was only a musician, but when another performer failed to show up one night, he was used as a singer, and they made him, you know, do some comedic relief. From then on, Aikman did both comedy and music. In 45, Aikman married Miss Estelle Stanfield the same year he formed a comedy duet with Willie Egbert, Westbrook, and they were invited to perform on the Grand Ole Opry. You can tell it has rain. This concrete, my shoes are wet enough to prove it. Aikman, by now known only as String Bean, was one of Opry's major stars in the 50s. He adopted a stage costume that accentuated his height, a shirt with an exceptionally long waist and tail tucked into a pair of short blue jeans, which he got those blue jeans from little Jimmy Dickens. That's why they look so silly. Aikman kept his audience with his traditional playing and his mixture of comedy and song. He scored country chart hits with chewing gum and I wonder where Wanda went. In 69, Aikman and Grandpa Jones became cast members of a new television show entitled Hee Haw. Now, I didn't know when I started this channel a year ago that I was gonna end up, thank you construction, that I would end up trying to complete the Hee Haw graveyard, you know, the grave list, but that's kind of what we're doing now. I've, I'm on this mission that we're gonna complete this. So one of his regular routines was reading a letter from home to his friends. 
ask about the latest letter, string bead would take it out, saying he carried it right next to my heart. Not finding it in his overalls pocket, he would check all of his other pockets by patting them with his hands until he found the letter, usually in his hip pocket. He would also, he was also the scarecrow in a cornfield who would, let, who would say one-liners before being shouted down by the crow on his shoulder. Good times, right? Accustomed to the hard times of the Great Depression, Aikman and his wife lived frugally in a small cabin in uh, Ridgetop, Tennessee. Their only indulge, indulgence was a Cadillac and a color TV. Depression-era bank failures caused Aikman not to trust banks with his money. Gossip around Nashville was that String Bean kept large amounts of cash on hand. Though he was no means wealthy by entertainment standards, on Saturday night, okay, so this is where the story starts to get crazy, right? On Saturday night, November 10th, 1973, Aikman and his wife returned home after a performance at the Opry. Both were shot dead shortly after their arrival. So they have this life where they just live a simple life, you know, depression era standards, like my grandmother had kind of a life like that. And I'm sure your grandmothers that if they went through the same thing they did too, right? So they get home, Aikman and his wife were shot dead. The killers had waited for hours. Their corpses were discovered the following morning by their neighbor, Mr. Grandpa Jones. A police investigation resulted in the convictions of cousin John A. Brown and Marvin Douglas Brown, both 23 years old at the time. They had ransacked the cabin and killed Strangbean when he arrived. His wife shrieked when she saw her husband murdered. She begged for her life, but she was shot as well. The killers took only a chainsaw and some firearms. Now, speaking of the killers, Marvin Brown, he died of natural causes in 2003 at Brushy Mountain Penitentiary, and he is buried at the prison cemetery. And in 2008, the Tennessee Parole Board deferred any parole for 36 months for the other one. He was again denied parole in 2011, but in 2014, John Brown was granted parole and was released after serving 41 years of a 198 year sentence. So here we are. There's Miss Estelle and Mr. David. You can see David string bean with his banjo together forever. And there's Miss Estelle with her fishing pole. And when you pull in, it says Music Row. So I don't know, like, forgive me, I know we're here for, you know, Mr. Mr. Aikman, but yeah, so there it is. So could you imagine? I mean, I can't, I know we can't, I can't anyway. I'm not, I can't speak for you, but I can't imagine. Like, see this one says Elrod, Bluegrass Boy. That's uh, James Elrod and there's Vicki Ross and Hawkins and um, like Judy Baker country music hostess see judy baker well see i know this guy this is harold hawkins like hawk show i think is how they said that and here's swift see there's vicky ross and gordon swift i'm pretty sure i'm kind of i'm pretty sure i remember that name but yeah that's some other names right next to Mr. Strangbean and his wife. Yeah, try not to get run over on the way back. So as I was saying before, could you imagine, oh, hold on. Like this is, this is some inside the, the filming studio here. I always try to take a picture, not for like a thumbnail or nothing, but I like to send it to the friends. Picture's taken, we're headed back to the car. Uh, yeah, so, the whole murder thing, right? Like, and this was before 
what I would consider like the drugs that I would suspect people doing this was in the 70s. So I don't know what they were trying to get. Like nowadays in this part of the world, in the South where we live, if something like that happened, I would have said, oh, well, they had to have been on meth. If anybody's had trouble with kin folks, we know those are the first ones that's going to turn on you because they, they just, I don't know, something's different with them, right? Yeah, such a bummer, man. Like, like an icon had, gosh, and then Grandpa Jones found him, right? Like, how big of a bummer was that? It's a beautiful, they're all beautiful in their own way, but I like this one. This one's nice. So y'all come back and we'll do a whole little tour of this, but yeah, how, finding your friend dead. And those of you that have lost loved ones like that, I'm sorry. I just, it's hard for me to imagine. Like uh, I haven't went through anything like this, so I can't, you know, I don't want to speak on behalf of y'all, but for me, it just seems, I can't imagine like you walk in your house and you're like, oh, hello there cousin that you know really well. And they just shoot you like, it's amazing the greed of money, right? Like the power of money is such a strong, I mean, it is the root of all evil, isn't it? But yeah, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. It does mean a lot that we get to, you and I get to come do these things together. And it's a really quiet day today other than the wind. Like normally there's always something going on in a cemetery, but not this one today. It's been really quiet. It's been a good little stroll. I am out of breath for some reason. Like, gosh, all I did was just walk down there. Am I that fat and out of shape? Gosh, what is going on? So yeah, thanks for watching. You know, it does mean a lot. I know I say that over and over and over, but it really does. And you know what? You never know what you're gonna find on the back roads. I'll see you guys next time.